started. Um, this lab right here. So it's vulnerable to request smuggling. The front end downgrades H2 requests, um, even if they have ambiguous length. So to solve the lab, perform a request smuggling attack that causes the victim's browser to load malicious JavaScript file from the exploit server called the alert document cookie. And the victim user accesses this page every 10 seconds. Okay, and then here's the ALPN override to go to uh, H2. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to open this in a new tab. So this is this is the example right here. They don't have can't specify the content length. Spec desk page any kind of headers. Blah blah blah. All right. Well, let's just put this. Look at our proxy history. Let's clear that up. Okay, now we're going to start fresh, going to hit the home. And here's what I like to do. This is the same methodology I use on H1, doing H1 request smuggling. Just go through one of them. All right, so see here it says H2. I'm going to press Control R, send a repeater. All right, send it through a repeater. Okay, that's nice. Now here's where the ALPN comes in. Go to repeater. Go to allow HTTP AL. Actually, before you do that, go here on the side, inspector. Uh, attributes, request attributes, click H2, then go to repeater, click HTTP to uh, ALPN override. So now you see that says H2. We're going to send it through. Uh, I send it through real quick by pressing Control Spacebar. Okay, so you'll hear that. It's Control Spacebar. And all right, that looks nice. So here's a couple things I do. This is something I do right here. Um, I started, I did this. This is a methodology I use when doing H1. So you're going to need an extension loader uh, loaded, the HTTP request smuggler. Now this smuggle probe, that's just for H1. We're going to mess with the, uh, we're doing H2. So we're going to smuggle probe. I'm just going to leave this stock as is. I don't know why this Windows is being weird. Um, so I'm going to launch the smuggle probe. It was okay. And logger plus plus should be okay. Extender, so it's showing that. That's why I put um, this URL in target or whatever. What, what do you call it? What is it? Target? Scope. Yeah, scope. And I put it there so that it would, we only see in scope items. And so this is what it's doing. This tool in the background, uh, okay, so it hasn't changed that from a get. It's putting this down there. Okay, here's a post, and it's putting this transfer encoding thing up here. Now, this is one way of doing it. And at some point, I think one of these might be successful, and you'll see it pop up here on the dashboard right there. Now that's one way of doing okay, so see there it is. And that's strange, it says TE transfer encoding, it, despite we're doing a CL, but uh, in any event, we can look at this here. It's always for the dashboard. And there's not much information there. Here's the request, so you see. Okay, and there's this right down here, this, oh no, no. And then I found on Kettle, uh, I'm pulling it up, I just now recall it, um, page down. You see this uh, little squiggly thing, HTTP, the up carrot and the tilde? I always wondered what that was. And then I came across it reading uh, James's white paper here. Okay, there we go. Got it. So you see right here, uh, let's see, zoom in. Adjust that. Adjust that. Maybe zoom out a bit. Okay. So it rewrites so tooling. So here we're using this tool he created, this research, blah, 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 possible. So what it does, the turbo intruder, so uh, invokes the engine. This is actually about changing the code in the turbo intruder. We're not doing that right now. It takes H1 formatted request as the input, rewrites it as H2. During the rewrite, it performs a few character mappings on the headers to ensure all the techniques used in the presentation possible. So you see that up carrot is uh, carriage, I think that's carriage return. Uh, and then the tilde is new line, start a new line. And that, you know, little back tick is uh, colon. So taking that into account, I just translate that as slash r slash n. If you remember H1, the slash r slash uh, so We're gonna send that to repeater. Okay, H2, H2, send it through, see what happens. Oh, we get a bunch of nothing. That's messing it up. Um, so here's, so that's all slash r slash n. This makes me think, uh, so what this would look like, and slash r slash n, and then you have to start a new line, right? 
Um, transfers to a new chunk. So we got slash r slash n, start a new line. Uh, so it's it's something like that. And uh, so we've not really gone into that in depth too much. So just going through that for now. In any event, let's continue on with the, uh, the exercise here. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to send it to repeater. I, I showed you that method earlier for enumerating. Okay, so HTTPN, oh, ah, get up there, override, attribute, go to H2. Okay, great. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to, you can go here, change request method. Okay, great. Now, now this is starting to look like something. Uh, you don't need all these headers. You can do it with all these headers, but it's just, I get rid of these. And I want to keep the user, we can get rid of user agent. Actually, no, I'm just going to leave it in for now. This chaha, whatever uh, cookie, you don't even need that. Get rid of that thing. Um, actually, tell you what, I will keep the cookie. Okay, good, it's working. So we'll just leave that content type application. Content length is zero. Uh, something else to check out, repeater, update content length. Right now that's checked. Um, I don't know, we might have to uncheck that later on. Uh, anyways, so we're gonna test this thing. Obviously the little tool said you could smuggle something, but let's let's uh, try something ourselves. Um, type something here. Well, let's just try smuggling some random uh, text. 200, 200, 200. Oh, there you go. See content link? Got to set that to zero. And not update it. There we go. Okay, now see this 404? What that 404 means is um, the back end is uh, appending every subsequent request to the smuggled prefix. Okay. So what we can go and do from here is let's send a get request for resources because let's, let's uh, refer to what James did so here's a get request that he put in there all right he was able to get a 302 and so this would this is the this is the uh, request and here's the response so we're, we're looking for something like this. You want, and okay, put that there for now. So, hmm. let's see, what do we have here? Okay, source, resources, resources. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, this is a, if you have not heard about this, all right, you wanna search for something and then just auto scroll, click that and I watch this. Every time we go. Oh, there's a 404 again. Okay, so let's do a get request for resources. Let's see what happens. And we'll say the content length. Content length, we're gonna say that is we're gonna call it five. though because that's x equals x that's three shouldn't that be a content length of three i think it should be three let's try three let's send it waiting done send it again okay look uh, so that looks like what kettle did with uh to netflix so here we go he made this get request so it crafted the orange prefix to trigger response, redirecting the victim's request to a server. So that was his server, right? And we just made this up. So by that logic, we should be able to use an exploit server, put a um, malicious payload on the exploit server, and then cause a victim to be redirected to do the same thing. Let's see if that is true. Okay, exploit server. I like to open things in new tabs. And what was the thing we had to do where... What were we? What was the instructions? Let's refer to the instructions here. Okay. No. That's sort of the instructions. Here we go. 
So labs vulnerable, blah, 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 to find that we have to, this is the payload. We have to cause an alert, document.cookie. Go back to that. All right, there. Okay, oh, no, we were on the exploit server. So that means that on the body of exploit, we're gonna alert cookie, and because, see right here, this domain resources, what's gonna end up being there, that's gonna be our exploit server URL, and our payload's gonna be contained in the file resources. So, go over here, you see where it says exploit, rename that to resource, oh, no, resources. Oh, click on that, there we go. This looks like it's working out and it'll store it okay now you're gonna i'll because i got just such a crazy screen here the resolution exploit you don't get the hps 4 slash none of that you go here just copy the url all the way down to dot net okay and stop there don't get the forward slash research resources and we're going to put that here for the host in our request all right so our goal is for this to pop up here and then uh, some unknowing user is going to make a request for this page and then they're going to get served this. So let's um, submit that. Okay. Kind of reminds me of web cache poisoning. So in the instructions for this, uh, it's like, I don't know, every 10 seconds or something, and we have to wait for someone else to come. And then it'll say lab solved. Okay, interesting. Random stream sources. So I'm gonna send this through a few more times Hopefully it'll it'll pop. Um, I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back. Okay, it looks like it finally worked. Congratulations, you solved the lab. Uh, the only things I changed were I got rid of the the cookie and the um, I don't know the X forward whatever the other header, and sent, just sent it through a few more times. Ended up changing that to one. I don't see why that would have made a difference, but probably wouldn't. Let's let's change it back to X. I mean, it's still gonna. So you essentially have to wait on their background process in the lab for the simulated victim to, to hit. So these labs, um, like I've said in the past, they can be very fickle. So just have some patience. And so we see that that worked. And so what we've done is we've caused a redirect for the victim to request our payload right there. Uh, in later labs coming up, we are actually going to be using the inspector to, okay, request headers to submit extra headers. And we'll do what's called kettling. So I'll see you in the next video.